that's focused on the facts. I just wrapped up a call with the Trump campaign. The waters have begun receding in southeast Queensland now. The cleanup begins. No matter the time. Welcome to the six news major breaking news we have for you. No matter the place. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm at the supermarket right now. You'll always see it first right here on Six News. Hello, you're watching Six News on the Hour. I'm Leonardo Puglisi. The top stories we're following right now: multiple dead as torrential rain and flash floods hit Auckland. Locals now beginning what's set to be a long clean-up, but more rain is set to come as new storm warnings are issued. Israel to boost their military forces on the West Bank after several attacks. A 13-year-old boy being named as the person behind a shooting just outside Jerusalem's old city. David Honey vows to fight on ahead of a leadership spill within hours. Now trying to hold on to the WA Liberal Party's top job in a challenge where only a third of MPs are believed to be backing him. And ongoing protests expected after video was released showing police officers in the US kicking and beating Tyron Nichols, who later died. The officers now facing second degree murder charges. Good evening, multiple people are dead and there is warnings of more rain to come in Auckland after torrential rain and flash flooding hit the city. New Zealand authorities have now issued fresh storm warnings with dozens needing to be rescued after becoming trapped in cars and houses. National reporter Austin Pollock has the latest developments. A state of emergency has been declared in Auckland as the city experiences its worst flooding in recorded history. At least three people have been confirmed dead and one person is missing in the aftermath of a severe weather system that brought over 150 millimetres of rain in just three hours on Friday. Uh, and having just surveyed some of the extensive damage, both on the ground and in the air, it's clear that it's going to be a big clean-up job. Uh, there are three confirmed fatalities and at least one person is missing as a result of the weather. Heavy rainfall has caused widespread damage to homes and properties across New Zealand's North Island. Transport and critical infrastructure have been affected with the airport being closed over the weekend and only reopening on Sunday. Multiple homes have been affected by landslides including this one in Tauranga, southeast of Auckland. Many roads have been inundated with water, cars trying to get through have been unsuccessful and many have been swept away by flood water. Public transport was disrupted with pictures showing a bus trying to make its way through floodwaters carrying concert goers from a cancelled Elton John concert. Another bus drove through floodwaters on Friday with floodwater swamping the vehicle. Authorities are encouraging people to avoid any transport unless it is absolutely essential. It comes after a train derailed northeast of Taipuke due to the ongoing but severe weather system. New Zealand's Defence Forces have been mobilised to assist with evacuations and setting up shelters for affected residents after newly sworn in Prime Minister Chris Hipkins toured affected areas. An Auckland resident told Six News no one saw it coming. Yeah, it's just unbelievable, unprecedented. Like, people who, you know, have lived... I mean, I've lived in Auckland most of my life. I've never seen anything like it, ever. Mm. But we've, we've been affected quite lightly compared to many people. We, we know... I know someone who's, you know, potentially going to lose their house. It's been, you know, really badly affected. Um, people have been killed in landslides. Three people have drowned. Um, there's whole, whole sort of sections of hillsides that have um, fallen in. And just up the street from us, there's part of the, the hillside has um, collapsed, and so there's a slip down onto the road. The, the new Prime Minister, I think, responded really, really well. I mean, he, um, he flew up um, the next day. We've got a new mayor in Auckland. 
and I think his response was was less than um, impressive, and mm. he's getting quite a bit of criticism for it. So it was a very slow response. Um, and some of the comments he's made, people are not impressed by him. I'm not impressed by him. But the new Prime Minister, he, he's, he's done a good job. The Met Service predicts the wild weather will continue until at least Tuesday. We are very vulnerable in the region at the moment um, to any rainfall. Of particular note is that the showers in the south and east have eased somewhat, but do continue on and off for the remainder of today. The rain is expected to ease over the next day, with another system expected early in the week. A 13-year-old boy has been named as the attacker behind a shooting just outside Jerusalem's old city, with Israel now saying they're going to be boosting their military forces on the West Bank following several attacks. Late last night, police said that two people were shot just days after seven were killed at a synagogue. At least 42 people have now been arrested in connection with that attack. That in itself comes after one of the deadliest Israeli military raids in years. Nine Palestinians, including a 61-year-old woman, killed in the occupied West Bank. The Western Australian Liberal Party is just hours away from heading to a spill that could see David Honey out of the top job after just two years. Libby Messam is the only other lower house Liberal MP and appears to be, according to some, the only other viable option if they aim to get back into the opposition status or even in government eventually. She is now vying for the role and only a third of MPs are now believed to be backing Honey. For more on this, we spoke to our WA reporter Owen Briffer a little earlier. So it was a big shake-up for the opposition um, part, opposition here in Western Australia. So this um, the Liberal Leadership Challenge comes after the WA opposition leader Mia Davies announced her resignation, as you said on Friday, saying she didn't have enough fuel left in the tank to go on. So the big shake-up. It's coming now. So Mia is stepping down as the leader of the WA Nationals, but will remain on the backbench. However, this has now sparked the WA Liberal shakeup. I think um, Libby has a high chance of getting into the role, and I think she um, would be a good person in the role. And I think what she's trying to do is is trying to bring accountability. Um, against the main um, the government in WA, the majority government, the McGowan Labor government. So that's where I think um, she's trying to step into the role to try um, bring an effective opposition party and hopefully try form a proper opposi um, opposition and have an agreement. It's the right of every member of our parliamentary team uh, to challenge for the leadership and uh, you know, that's where it lies. Now, people will form views from time to time about that. That's their right, and it's the right of the entire parliamentary team to determine who their leader is. Uh, look, I hold Libby in high regard. Libby and I have a great working relationship, and regardless of what happens on Monday, Libby and I will continue to have a great working relationship. Let's be frank, there's two of us in the lower house. Um, we need to work together. We've been working together well. We'll continue to work together no matter the outcome. But in the last six years, the leadership has changed a lot with different leaders and they've never been able to keep as a stable leader, so which would affect the public um, eye. And from the public's view, they would probably think the party's not um, a, a able and accountable to have a stable party and hence why part of Mark McGowan's victory two years ago as a majority government here in Western Australia. Now, Honey is vowing to fight on even if he does lose the top job. He says he will stay in Parliament and avoid a by-election. That could hurt the party even more. For his take, Six News also spoke to Ivan Lung from WAMN News. He is in Perth to get his reaction to the spill, which is happening tomorrow afternoon, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, about 11am WA time. I think Mia Davies' resignation has definitely got something to do with uh, Libby's, uh, you know, getting the challenge. Uh, and and quite frankly, any evidence? I 
do kind of felt that there's a bit of a timing has been well August, well August traded. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of undercurrent behind the scenes, which unfortunately I don't think I will have the time to uh, delve through. But my understanding and my feeling is, is that you know this has been a long orchestrated campaign. They have been ready for quite a while, and when Mia goes, the time is now. So therefore, in their view, uh, yeah, it's the right time to challenge. Uh, David has held a media conference on uh, Saturday morning. Uh, eleven thirty. So then, after that, of course, we put it out on our live feeds. But uh, he, he intends to stay as a uh, intends to stay as a Coleslaw MP. He doesn't intend to resign. That's what he says. But we'll see what happens on a party room meeting. And also, when it comes to the leadership itself, he's going to contest. So it'll be very interesting to see actually who has the numbers. But uh, I would say a bit more uh, when you ask me a bit more. Now, you know, obviously with nine MPs, it's, it's not going to take long to count the vote here. But uh, do you reckon Honey actually has the numbers here and, and can survive? I've heard he's only got another two MPs who might be supporting him. Well, I'll put it this way. There are several circumstances. Uh, depends on how deep the rabbit hole he wants to go. Now, this is just a, this is just an Ivan theory. OK, so you can have... Uh, of course, you know the, the 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 of course the current alliance is not a coalition; it's an alliance. So that depends on if at at this point uh, Shane Love uh, is more experienced uh, overall, though. But it's more preferred seems. But but Peter Rundle is running. So but we don't know whether Shane Love is running or not now. The possibility is he can because if they try to say okay, well. Uh, if they give the opposition leadership to Libby Metum, if she wins, and then the traditional way of deputy opposition leader is given to the nationals. Now that could uh, that could happen. There could be a coalition going on. We do not know, but the alliance is certainly going to be around. Or alternatively, uh, if David wins, then uh, the opposition will opposition leader or the nationals will will be whoever it is because it's either Shane Love. Or Peter Rundle, um, uh, the new uh, the new member for the for the by election. Uh, that a lot of press saying that she's still quite green. She's not ready for it yet. So there's quite a few things going on. But when it comes to the spill itself, uh, who has numbers? Who doesn't have the numbers? I can share a bit more. As I said, if you ask me a bit more. You and I aren't strangers to leadership spills, be that state or federal, government or opposition. But of course, Honey's in a unique position where he's the Liberal leader, but he's not the opposition leader. The Nationals are the opposition. Uh, and of course, you know, he, he's trying to lead them in what is probably the worst situation for them in WA ever, really. It's well and truly is an extraordinary, extraordinary circumstances. Uh, it is in tatters for the start of the year. But hey, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to uh, leadership changes and when it comes to who has numbers, who doesn't have the numbers, uh, you and I know very well that uh, this will be a tight race. It could just come down to one or two votes. Now, when that happens, because there's not a lot of uh, members. And on the other hand, having said that, though, when it comes to leadership spill, there's a lot of words flying around. Who has numbers, who doesn't have the numbers? Uh, of course, everyone wants to find out now. But hey, the, re uh, the reality is that these are all just rumors. I'll tell you a story. I mean, back in uh, several years ago, when Colin Barnett was still the premier, there was uh, there was a moment when Dean Alder challenged him. And on that night, uh, before the party room meeting, uh, my understand was that uh, some members gave me a call and asked me, do I have the numbers? I say, well, of course not. I don't have the numbers, mate. And what that sort of says to me was that like, um, Dean Nolder got the numbers. And uh, I raised my eyebrows quite a bit. Um, so I called my staff and we get together and say whether, whether we put it out or not. We've decided not to put it out because obviously we want to uh, make sure that everything is accurate and we don't want to be inaccurate. Uh, and it turns out, of course, that uh, Dean Alders doesn't have the numbers. It's Colin Barnett that came out triumphed. Uh, and then uh, Mark McGowan defeated him in the 2017 state election. So what this tells me uh, all the time is that people can say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, however they like. But prepare for both circumstances and uh, and just be open about it. I mean, that's my experience. That's my two cents uh, on leadership challenges. 
The Liberal Party has easily retained the Victorian seat of Narrican in a supplementary election overnight. The election was triggered following the death of Nationals candidate Sean Gilchrist and was the last seat to be decided following November state election that saw the Andrews government re-elected with another majority. And the vote for Freedom Parties, while they didn't win, is looking pretty strong. Reporter Lincoln Holmes has all the details. Finally, after more than two months of waiting, Narrowcad gets to have its say in the Victorian state election. Wayne Farnham easily retaining the seat for the Liberals with a primary vote of more than 40% and a two-candidate preferred percentage in the 60s. The results are fairly in line with what was predicted, with both Labor and the Nationals choosing not to run at this time. The Greens and independent candidate Tony Wolfe are fairly even on a primary vote in the race for second position, while so-called freedom parties have also had high vote shares. The Democratic Labor Party, which did not run initially back in November, has been leading that group of parties with between 6 to 7% of the vote, followed closely by the Freedom Party, One Nation and Liberal Democrats. When you combine the vote of up to four to five Freedom Parties, it comes to a total of more than 20%. That figure could possibly be explained by the ALP's decision not to run, despite receiving more than 31% of the vote back in 2018. Candidates have previously told Six News that these parties have been active at polling stations on the ground. They are pretty active and they're down here on the pre-polls. Oh, um, but yeah, we have a lot of people coming through and saying, hey, like, you know, I know what's going on because, you know, I've, I live here and we've just had the election. So sort of still having them ideas and, and they're probably being a little bit uh, left behind because, you know, everyone was really focused during the election last year and um, that they've made up their minds already. And, and we have seen people coming through and letting us know that. So not needing any paper or anything. Um, but yeah, some are active and some aren't. The results mean all seats in the Victorian Parliament have now been decided and the coalition will be left with 28 seats. That won't really affect the Andrews government majority, with the upper house instead being the place when negotiations will be required. Lincoln Holmes, 6 News. David Littleproud says alcohol restrictions in the NT should never have been removed. The Nationals leader also says a voice to Parliament will not be closing the gap for First Nations people, adding that in his view there is, quote, no malice in what the Nationals are doing in terms of their formal opposition to the voice. Their coalition partners in the Liberal Party still yet to formally decide their position on the referendum. Overseas again now, ongoing protests in the United States are expected following the death of Tyre Nichols, a 29-year-old and video being released showing him being beaten by police officers. The Scorpion unit in Memphis, Tennessee has now been disbanded with officers involved in that unit involved in the arrest. Earlier I caught up with our US correspondent Jackson Gosnell to get the latest. Outrage is continuing to grow here in the U.S. following the police beating and ultimately death of Tyree Nichols. The horrible incident happened in Memphis and now that community and others throughout the country are outraged, understandably so. Five now former officers have been charged with second degree murder along with a host of other charges. After they pulled this guy over, it ultimately led to them beating him and shouting profanities at him. As I mentioned, they've all been fired and charges have been placed against them. The city really telling everyone that they do not encourage this type of behavior and that this went horribly wrong. Uh, there is people who are speaking out on this issue saying that stuff has to change as it relates to police brutality here in America. And it is important to note that this should have been a routine traffic stop. We don't know what led to them actually pulling him over. However, this should have been nothing more than a routine, hey, hello, how are you? This is the problem. I need your license, registration, and insurance, and then sending him on his way. It didn't happen that way and ultimately led to this terrible incident. Uh, we do not have a lot of specifics because due to it being so early in the investigation, information is limited at this stage and we're still working to get more, although the police department and authorities are limited as to what they can tell us. 
protest erupted throughout the country following the body cam video being released. The body cam video shows exactly what everyone expected was those police officers beating him. He was put in the hospital and then ultimately passed away a few days later. So it's just a horrible situation. We're continuing to see all of the fallout from it with these protests throughout the country. I'll be sure to keep you posted and monitor the story from right here. I'm Jackson Gosnell. Back to you. Meta, the parent company that owns Facebook and Instagram, has put Donald Trump on notice after allowing him back onto that platform, but it will remain to be seen whether he'll actually use them. Twitter, which he also was allowed back onto, has not been used by the former U.S. president as of yet. For more, we caught up with Wyatt Sharp, our North American correspondent, who's in Washington, D.C. When looking at, at what's happening with him, specifically Meta, and Facebook, and, and Instagram, Meta's the company that kind of oversees both of those two platforms. Um, they're essentially saying that he's not going to be treated any differently than vendors. So if he goes on to um, essentially break the same policies that got him suspended in the first place, uh, then they are prepared to do the same thing again. Uh, it's really unclear for how long that would be. It's kind of dependent on the circumstances. And why, of course, you know, he does want to be president again. He only just held a campaign rally. And, you know, some analysts do think it is critical to, for him to use social media. We know how active he was, especially on a platform like Twitter as well, um, when he was president and when he was running. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You know, you hear and you see a lot of um, him being active on his own platform, Truth Social. But the, the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of Americans, unless they are a part of the and unless their politics are the same as the politics that Donald Trump embraces, the vast majority of Americans are not on a platform like Truth Social. They're on platforms like Facebook or Instagram uh, or Twitter, um, maybe not as much Twitter, again, Facebook and Instagram. Um, so, I mean, I think when looking at it, yeah, it, it, it is true. I mean, social media outreach, outreach plays a very huge role as to how the, the politics and how elections are ultimately influenced which perhaps isn't necessarily the best of things. I mean, it is easy to spew misinformation and, and I mean, it's easy to spew things that aren't necessarily what should be being talked about. Um, and I think we saw that with someone like Donald Trump, for example, you know, Facebook and Instagram suspending him off of uh, their platforms, Twitter suspending him off of their platform is ultimately due to the January 6th insurrection on, on the Capitol, which many people say he is responsible for. So I think it really is ensuring, as many people have told me, that it really is ensuring that if he is allowed back on the platform, which is the case, and now with Twitter being, being back allowed on Twitter, as well as a few months ago when Elon Musk acquired ownership of the company, um, the real question now comes down to, will he break the rules again? And, and if he does, what will the consequences be? And, and just lastly, I'll mention, just because Facebook and Instagram are unbanning him off of their platforms and, and essentially giving him control of his account again, doesn't mean he will use it. I mean, for example, on Twitter, Elon Musk gave him uh, back control of his Twitter account and no signs of public usage on Twitter since I believe January 8th of 2021. Uh, so, I mean, there, there's really, I think, not a whole lot that can necessarily be read into this because just because he's being allowed onto the platform, again, doesn't mean that he's going to use the platform again. Well, of course, you know, back home, the WA leadership spill for the Liberal Party continues to be an ongoing story right now. Uh, for their coverage of it, uh, let's see what's making news right now with the team at WAMN News. Ivan Amelia over in Perth. Thank you, Leo. Tonight on WAMN News, opening up about surrogacy. A WA woman reveals her move to seek an alternative route to having children. A WAMN News exclusive. Also this week, turmoil in the opposition. The leadership challenge for both Liberals and Nationals is set to go ahead in the next few days. Lion dances to welcome the Year of the Rabbit. Major celebrations in Northbridge to mark the Chinese Lunar New Year. And voice versus treaty. The latest argument following Australia Day, plus Dr Andrew Miller's comment. Join us tonight on the WMN News Facebook page and YouTube channel. 
night. Thanks to both Arvin and Melody. They're now to tomorrow's weather forecast right across the nation. Brisbane, partly cloudy, 30 degrees. Thunderstorms in Sydney and Canberra, tops of 24 and 22 respectively there. 22 as well in Melbourne, down in Hobart. It'll be mostly the same conditions, so a bit of a warmer high of 25, 26 in Adelaide. Showers expected, 28 in Alice Springs. A sunny top of 36 over in Perth and in Darwin, a warm but wet top of 31. A reminder of the top stories we are following on 6 News this hour and New Zealand authorities have issued more storm warnings after multiple people were found dead in Auckland after torrential rain and flash flooding hit the area. There is warnings of more rain to come with dozens of people needing to be rescued. And a 13 year old boy has been named as the person behind a shooting just outside Jerusalem's old city. Israel now saying they are boosting their military forces. Two people were shot just days after seven were killed at a synagogue. That in itself comes after one of the deadliest Israeli military raids in years nine Palestinians killed in the occupied West Bank. And that is 6 News for this hour. There is more news 24-7 on our website, 6newsau.com and on social media. Just search 6newsau to find us. More news coverage continues right after this. For now, though, I'm Leonardo Puglisi. Thanks for your company. Good night. When news breaks here in the United States, 6 News has got you covered. From the big political stories to what's being talked about on the ground, we'll keep you informed with up-to-the-minute reporting and exclusive stories. President Trump's endorsement is the biggest endorsement in all of politics, period. And that's the challenge, that right? That we, that's, that's exactly the challenge to it. Hopefully this doesn't backfire and people just stop calling police altogether. He's taking unprecedented action, mandatory quarantines, very strict